Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So I've had quite a lot of you ask about investments and I'm not talking about financial investments in terms of money in the bank. People have been asking about what my best investments were in terms of clothing, bags, accessories, etc. And before we get going, I think it's really important to touch on the fact that an investment is different for everyone. So for me, an investment is something that I spend my money on, which brings me satisfaction and reward, which outweighs the amount of money I spent on it. So an investment's different for everyone, depending on, I guess, your disposable income, depending on how much you save up to spend on the item, and really, ultimately, how much you get back from that item. So I have invested in various things, um, probably across the last 10 years, and the items that I'm going to talk about today are items that... I have had lots and lots of use from that have definitely stood the test of time and that when I look at them, I'm so glad I spent my money on them. So as I mentioned, something can still be an investment even if the amount you spent on it was £50, could even be £30 and it's relative to each individual person. Now, the items I'm going to share today range from a thousand pound right through to 50 pound. And I always talk about where I would advise spending the most part of your budget. Now, when we talk about things like handbags, investment handbags are a big thing to some women. And for me, I really do like the more classic pieces. However, a lot of the classic pieces are way above what I personally could afford and what I can justify spending on a handbag. However, the handbag I'm going to share today, you may also think that is ridiculous and I wouldn't spend the money on that. So with that in mind, I'm going to introduce the first item and explain a little bit about why I feel it was one of my best investment purchases. Okay guys, so before I introduce this bag, I will say that um, when I had Austin almost 10 years ago, I decided that I wanted a luxury handbag and that I would start to save for one. Now I hadn't got a clue about what handbag I would buy, but I just kept putting money away every month. And every time I went to the local Tesco or Asda and I almost bought something which I wasn't really in love with, I would transfer that exact amount into a savings account. Now, this handbag, honestly, I saved up around £500 and then the boiler broke and I had to use that money on the boiler. So I had to start again. And then some of this handbag was also funded by vouchers that I'd collected from friends and family for birthdays and through a work um, commission scheme that I used to be part of. So this is the Mulberry Alice. Now, I'm just going to sit back a little bit. So it's basically a leather handbag, which has got this really nice feature to it where when the strap flaps down, it sort of folds it. And it's got the gold hardware. What I really love about this handbag is that it was never like a super trendy piece. Like you see the Alexas and the Bayswaters, which are amazing classic bags. But I wanted something that fit with my style. And they're quite classic bags. And when I was searching, I sort of realised very quickly that my budget was going to need to be around a thousand pound for the sort of bag in the material and the size that I wanted. So I kept on saving. Anyway, I bought this bag and honestly, I must have had this bag nine years and I use it nonstop. It's got a crossbody. It's got the hand held straps. You can put it over your arm. It fits loads in. And I can honestly say I can't see myself selling this bag. So yes, it was just under a thousand pound. I made a really big thing when I went to buy it. I took a friend with me and I had the most amazing customer service. And yeah, I don't use it every single day. But if you think this bag has been one of my favorite bags for the last nine years or so, and 
wear and tear wise, you honestly would not know it's that old. It's got studs on the bottom, which means you can put it down. However, I didn't actually put it on the floor for a long time. So I would say handbags, they're great as an investment purchase. But if like me, you are a normal person and it's a pretty big deal to spend that much money on a handbag, think carefully about it. Make sure it's a colour that will go with lots of your outfits. Make sure the size of it will fit in what you tend to take with you day to day. If you've got an endless budget, then that is a different story. And I know a lot of influencers are buying Dior and Gucci, Hermes every day of the week, but that's not me. And I also feel a little bit uncomfortable, if I'm honest, about that level of splurge. You know, money means a lot to me. And I was brought up really knowing the value of money and appreciating that every pound you spend is a unit of time that you've worked. So, you know, if it's your own money and money that you've worked hard to save up for, then you really do need to think about what and how you invest your money. So that is item number one. That is the oldest item in this entire video. So we'll move on to the next one now, which I think will stick with handbags because this is probably the second most expensive item in this video, which is my Gucci Betty handbag. Now, completely different in some ways to the Mulberry. It's small, it's a clutch bag. It's got a long crossbody strap to it. You can also remove the long strap so you can have it under your arm. But I wanted a designer bag that I could wear going out that didn't feel too big if it was sort of like just a few drinks. And as you can see, it's not huge. It does fit your phone, your card, your money, your lipstick. And this I got from Bista Village. And again, it was a big deal to me. I'd saved up. I went with a friend. I made a day of it. And I think this is about three or four years old now. It's worn beautifully. The Safiano leather is amazing. And again, I will not get rid of this bag. It means a lot to me. I look after it and it's stored well. And you'll see it in a lot of my videos. So again, £350. That was heavily discounted at Vista Village. And it's something which just keeps coming out. Every time I put an outfit together, if it's a little bit more dressy, I will immediately think if it's a black bag, this one. And if it's a lighter coloured bag, I will wear my coach bag. So sticking with Gucci, I think most of you, if you followed me for a while, will know that I do love my Gucci Marmont belt. So again... This was a massively considered purchase. This was £320. I don't want anyone watching this video to think that I just woke up one day and decided to buy this belt. I'd loved it. I'd seen it online. I sat back. I waited to see if it was just a bit of a fad. And the more I saw it, the more I loved it, the more I could see myself wearing this. And I looked at some cheaper ones and tried them on. And I just thought, look, I do not have a dark coloured, wide belt. This will last me a long time. I ordered it from Netta Porter and it wasn't an in-shop purchase because at the time I was struggling to find the right length and the right width because these come in this width and then the half width. So I ordered it online and it was really exciting for me and you will have seen on many 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 of my videos and photos I love to wear this the only way I wouldn't wear this is across the waist because as you know I've got a really short waist and it basically takes up half of my torso so again a good belt is a really great investment and that is the only expensive belt I own if I was to think about buying another belt which I have had on my wish list for a while now it would be the Valentino buckle belt in blush and tan. And that is a reversible belt, which again, it's a huge investment for me. I'm a mum of two. I have my own house. I have bills. I have all the day-to-day -day stuff that most people have to pay for. And I don't have anyone contributing to that. So for me to make an investment purchase, it has to be well thought out. And I have... Um, a Monzo account and in that account you can split your money into pots and what I do every month is I put a little bit into savings 
which are for my investments. So at the moment, I'm putting £50 a month in towards buying the Gucci Prince Town loafers, which again, when I buy them, it will be special to me. I have had a slightly cheaper pair, in fact, very much cheaper pair, and worn them a lot. And I just know that when I get those, I will look after them and they will go with so many outfits in my wardrobe because at the minute, I'll put something on and think, oh yeah, that would go with those Gucci loafers. And, you know, each person is different. Personally, <laughs> from birth and beyond, I have always loved luxury products. I haven't always been able to afford luxury products. I've always prioritised things like buying a house, buying a car, getting married, saving for holidays. And it's only really been since I've had kids that, you know, I've earned more and been able to actually save up to invest in these. So, you know, I remember going to Harrods as a child and just <laughs> loving all the luxury names, going and collecting all the little perfume um, testers and taking them home. And it's just my thing. For some people, it might be a flash car. For some people, it might be a ginormous house. For me, I love my three bed semi. It's home. It's plenty big enough. And I would rather have that disposable cash to save up for investment. So on that note, let's move on to some of the other items that I've got here. Um, I've got a couple, in fact, four clothing items, some trainers and some sunglasses. So let's move on. Okay, so let's have a little break from accessories and talk about clothing. So when it comes to investing in clothing, again, everybody's budget is different. But for me personally, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't spend more than a hundred pound on an item of clothing. I'm trying to think if anyone's going to call me out on anything, but I don't think I own anything over a hundred pound. Even my nice coats and my Mac, they have definitely been under a hundred pound. I don't own a real leather coat because personally I find them very heavy. I lusted after the All Saints blazer for a good few months and they didn't have my size. So I invested in two other blazers. Now I feel like blazers and jeans are a great place for investing in. Um, t-shirts are fantastic and I have a couple of investment t-shirts from Enim Bing and Victoria Beckham but I am a nightmare for spilling things and getting marks on stuff. So for me personally, I have invested in a couple of blazers. Now, these blazers are under £50, but for me, I think they are still a great investment because of the level of quality, the fit, the cut, and how much I have worn these jackets. Now, you could buy a £200 blazer or a £1,000 blazer from Balman and never wear it. And to me, that is not an investment. Yes, you probably would get a little bit more than the money you spent on it back if you sold it. But it's not a personal investment. It's not something in my wardrobe which is actually paying me back. And you know I always talk about cost per wear, which is the price of the item, divided by how many times you've worn it, which is the price, the cost the item has been to you per time you've worn it. So these two blazers are by The Drop. So you can see there, I'll just hold it up. And then we've got the beige one. Now, these are by The Drop, which is the influencer collaboration range on Amazon. They were both, like I say, I think they were £46. Um, and for me, I love a long blazer. I love a lined blazer. I love single breasted. I don't like wide collars. And they just work so well. So... For me, they're an investment. I wear those all the time. I'll wear them over dresses. I'll wear them with a t-shirt and jeans. I'll wear them dressed up. I'll wear them with trainers. And I think they are a really good investment. As you know, I love coats. But apart from my Mac, I think most of my coats have been under £50. Um, in fact, I might have got a black wool coat from Misguided, which was around £70. But again, that is an example of an investment coat, just a simple black coat. However, it's a black coat. I don't think, oh my God, wow, I'm so glad I invested in that. 
but those blazers I searched for so long to find the best cut and they do also do a white one and again with investments you need to make sure that you what you buy in the right cut and the right color for your skin tone so the beige one works really well for me I love it with leopard I love it with white and the black one is just a pretty standard one. Black is not anyone's colour, apart from if you have got a winter skin tone. However, I like to wear it over lots and lots of different things. And it doesn't sit directly underneath my face. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. So the next thing that I invested in, and this wasn't until last year, is jeans. I love Primark jeans, I love Matalan jeans, I love warehouse jeans, I love H&M jeans, but I found that there were certain styles of jeans that I loved and that I really wanted to spend a little bit more money on because the ones that I'd got, I'd worn and worn and worn and worn, and as you can imagine, a pair of Matalan jeans won't last you forever. So I bought two Levi skinny jeans, one in this charcoal and one in jet black and love them. They were under £100, I think they were £80 each but Amazon do a great try before you buy service on these jeans so you can order lots of different waist sizes, different lengths, try them at your leisure and then decide within seven days if they work for you. So They've been a great investment. I wear them with Dr. Martins, trainers, long boots, the lot. But it wasn't until I realised that actually I'd had loads of wear out of my cheaper ones that these really were an investment for me. So sticking with clothes, I would say this is probably one of my favourite investments. And this is the Anine Bing oversized hoodie you will have seen it probably quite a lot but as soon as I saw it I loved it and that was 120 pound which is a lot of money but I just knew straight away I knew what I'd wear it with I knew it would go with so many things I knew that the anime being quality was fantastic having bought things from her collections before and yeah it has been worn a lot and it will still get worn a lot. So, yeah, I think one of the things with investment purchases is to find a brand that really does feel like you. You know, it's not always about the way that they style the models. It can be about, you know, its values, its ethos, the cuts. And pretty much everything I see on an Bing site is just calling my name. Um, there is a black crossbody handbag on there which is beautiful, it's studded, but it's on my wish list. Like I said, I don't rush into these things. Everything is a considered purchase. And I think that is really important as someone that's online to promote that, you know, and to remind people that people who have luxury items didn't just wake up one day and decide to impulsively buy things. Maybe some people do, but I don't have the money to do that. So if I want something nice, I have to save up for it. I think it's too easy to see a logo on a picture and think, oh my God, you know, they can afford everything and I can't. When in truth, I've been putting £50 a month away for the last six months to be able to buy something. I also think things like Klarna are fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think actually what I bought on Klarna and the next item I did buy on Klarna, the Anim Bing sweater was so out of stock everywhere that I just had to dig into my savings straight away and pay for that in full. So the next beautiful pair of shoes, can't find my clicker, is down here and I will just grab it now. Right, so if you've been following me for a while, I'm sure this top is not that central. Anyway, if you've been following me for a while, you will know I am trainer obsessed and I have been in love with trainers since I was about 10. Um, again, 
I didn't have a new pair of trainers every month at school. I would get a new pair of trainers every year and I would think about them. And I had everything from Adidas Galaxy to Nike Air. I'm trying to think of some of my other favourites. But I honestly used to adore my trainers and I used to be so precious about keeping them clean. And even now I am sat looking and I can see at least 10 pairs of trainers sat there lined up because they are my thing. I get a bad back if I wear heels. I've had a problem with my hips um, since having the kids. So even when I do wear heels, it's not high. Anyway, I'm rambling. You don't need my life story. These. The Vasia V10s. These are almost like a tennis shoe. And I would refer to them as a smart trainer because of their leather upper. These were a big inv investment, investment for me. They were £110, which again, to some people, that is just ridiculous. Like my boyfriend was outraged. He's outraged that I spent £1,000 on a handbag. But yet he would invest that into the stock market. He would spend that without a second thought on a holiday. And I know that everybody is different and holidays are so important to me. I would never buy a pair of trainers like this and forgo my children going on holiday, my kids having brand new trainers, school uniform. These are the things that I save for and invest my money in. And to me, they are worth it. You know, I research the brands. I look at how things are made. Will they last me? What can I wear them with? I always weigh up the cost per wear and the return on my investment before I buy something. And I had seen one of my favourite influencers wear these trainers over and over with dresses and jeans. And I just knew I had to have them. And I ordered these from Shoe. Now, Shoe do work with Klarna. So I split these into three month payments which, you know, that is actually more affordable for some people who might not want to spend all in one go. I tried two sizes. I really considered, are these for me? I have got other white trainers with black logo on. But no, I needed them. So I got them and I have worn them a lot. As with all trainers, it is inevitable. You will get some sort of fake tan on the back. I'm not a massive fake tan wearer, but there are times when you wear fake tan, you put on your favourite trainers and it happens, unfortunately. So the Vasia V10s, absolute investment for me. I will have these for years. These are not a trend piece for me. Vasia has been around for three or four years now. In fact, probably longer, but they've only been really present um, online for around three or four years. And I love them. And there we go. So finally... I'm going to talk about sunglasses. I have got other investment trainers. I've got investment shoes. Um, just to touch on them, we, you know, I would say that Doc Martens are an investment because they are pricey and they do take a while to wear in. But for me, I will have these for at least 10 years. Quote me on it. Um, another investment pair of shoes which I have got is these gorgeous Chloe dupes. Now, you might find another influencer sat doing a video like this saying the Chloe dupes are an amazing investment. But for me personally, I wanted this sort of boot. I was not prepared to pay Chloe money, sorry to the brand. And I wanted something like this that was top end quality. And I found these on Amazon. If anyone wants the link, let me know. But just check out how amazing the quality is the bottom everything all the details they are just amazing and great with maxi dresses to be honest that's how i wear these so again i wouldn't want to be spending the sort of money on chloe boots for shoes that i would only wear with maxi dresses because maxi dresses for me are a spring thing I don't really tend to wear them too much in autumn, winter. I would just wear these with a black maxi dress and tights. But again, it's not an everyday piece of footwear. So although these were around £80, um, they were still an investment to me. That's not a small amount of money. 
but I wouldn't want to be spending any more on that. So that is the Chloe dupe. So onto sunglasses. I will just pick up a few. Um, so two things to touch on with sunglasses is that for me personally, I will always, always buy cheaper trend sunglasses. If they are crazy and a little bit out there, I would tend to buy them from the likes of H&M, Amazon, Primark. Uh, and just an example of that is these, which were from Primark. These were from Misguided. I love the shape of those. Um, but my other investment sunglasses are here. So this pair is the Ray-Ban Rounds. I had these actually for Christmas, so I can't really say they're an investment, but they would be an investment and I was planning to buy them. Um, but Matt bought them for me, which was amazing. These other classic black Ray-Bans, again, take the time to research the sunglasses that suit your face shape, that you like, that feel like you, that give you the vibe that you want to portray. Now these, mm, I sound a bit of a liar actually, because these are quite trend based, but I saw these and fell in love with these Tom Ford sunglasses. They are an investment. They are giving me all the Elton John vibes, but I love them. And they felt like me. I think they, I think they were £120, which again is expensive, but I do see sunglasses that you love as something that you'll have for a long time. And the other pair of investment sunglasses are these Gucci aviators. They are absolutely filthy, and I'm sorry if you can see that, but again. These, I think they were 130 sunglasses, trainers. They are my thing. Some people, again, they may be more into handbags. But for me, I've got my Mulberry, I've got my Gucci, I've got the Coach handbag. And, oh, I've got a Valentino bag. But again, that was around £40 from TK Maxx. I haven't really massively invested in handbags because I like to have those classic styles. So I think that's it. Um, just to briefly touch on jewellery, I have got some lovely, lovely luxury jewellery. Um, but most of it has been gifts, although I do see it as an investment. You know, like these Misoma hoops, they are certainly not cheap. To some people, that might be pocket money. But to me, my Misoma jewellery is very very precious to me I really look after it and it means that I can take a shower in it I haven't got the faff of taking it on and off but I do have quite a few misoma pieces um a couple of Gucci pieces and my Gucci necklace which you'll have seen a lot as you can tell I love Gucci um I've had since my 30th birthday so you know eight years on I wear it every single week um and recently I got another Gucci necklace as a gift which is a big deal for me. I don't want you to sit watching this thinking, oh yeah, you know, she just got another Gucci necklace. These are special things for me and I am the sort of person who, yes, loves luxury purchases, but I look after stuff. I'm not the sort of person that would get a new luxury item and just, you know, chuck the handbag on the floor or, you know, swap my sunglasses in the bag. I always keep the cases and try and keep them clean, although these have got fingerprints on them. However, Matt used to borrow these until I bought him his very own pair. So anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's all come across in the right way. I hope for those of you that asked for this video, this answers a lot of the questions around what to invest in. Um, I do think coats are a great investment, even though I haven't touched on coats. But because I love coats, I personally don't tend to spend a lot of money on coats. And even something like a Burberry Trench... I went and scratched the itch and tried one on and it really wasn't for me. I didn't like the fit of it on me. So again, that's not going to be on my investment list. 
If you're interested to know what else is on my wish list, what I'm saving up for, what my planned purchases are going to be, then let me know. And I better get tidied up now because I'm surrounded by all these lovely items. Thanks for watching, guys, and catch you later.